today, Brian is not just cooking any cut of beef. He's cooking the leanest, meanest cut of beef on the block. That's the bottom round roast. That's right. And I happen to have a bit of family history with this roast. Oh, that's not a good thing. <laughs> it never is, right? Growing up, I used to eat this two to three times a week. Oof. And my parents would cook it blood rare. And as a child, I despised this cut. Oh. And so when it crept back into my life here in the test kitchen, I was doubtful that I would ever <laughs> find love for this thing. But I'm happy to report we fixed a lot of those problems and I actually find myself craving it, oddly Really? Enough. So the first step is salting the roast overnight. Now salting is gonna change the structure of the proteins and also obviously season the roast. Right. So I like to season on a sheet of plastic wrap because I will be wrapping it in plastic before I put it in the refrigerator. So we'll start off, we have two teaspoons of kosher salt here and you wanna get it all over the roast. So we'll just wrap this up with our plastic wrap. Now we'll put it onto our plate and we'll refrigerate it for at least an hour, but if you can go a full 24 hours, that's even better. Okay. Our roast has been salting for several hours and we're ready to move on to our herb crust. Mm. So we're not searing this roast in a skillet or anything before we go into the oven. So the herb crust is really gonna help us get a nice exterior look. Makes sense. So we're gonna chop up one tablespoon of fresh thyme. Okay. Measure that out. And we have about a tablespoon of chopped fresh rosemary. Okay, so that's about a tablespoon of rosemary. And to our herb mixture, we're gonna add two teaspoons of black pepper and one teaspoon of kosher salt. Okay, so we'll just give this a quick mix. Okay, we're just trying to combine that. And now for the roast, in order to get the crust to stick to the roast, we're gonna brush it with two tablespoons of vegetable oil. The roast is incredibly lean, so a little bit of fat on top really helps. We wanna pat it dry with some paper towels just to make sure any of the moisture that's come out from the salting process doesn't interfere with our crust. And now we'll brush it with two tablespoons of vegetable oil. This not only helps the crust stick, but it also helps with the browning in the oven because we're gonna be cooking it at such a low oven temperature. Now, we could season the roast. You wanna get even coverage all the way around. Okay, now we could put our roast on this wire rack that we set inside of a rim baking sheet. And we're going to insert a temperature probe into the thickest part of the roast. So that tends to be right there in the middle. And the reason for this is because we wanna monitor the temperature of the roast without opening the oven. We're gonna cook at a very low temperature, 250 degrees for about two hours until this roast hits 120 degrees internally. And then without opening the oven door, we're going to shut the oven off and let the roast coast on up to 135 degrees, which would be about a medium doneness. Cooking it all the way to medium really benefits the flavor and the texture. All right, Julia, the temperature is now 135 degrees. That is a pretty bottom round roast. It's really transformed, hasn't it? So we're gonna remove this thermal probe and we can bring our roast out of the oven. Okay, now we're just gonna transfer our roast to a carving board and it needs to rest for a good 30 minutes. So we're gonna tent it loosely with the foil and just let that rest for a while. Okay. It's been about 30 minutes and our roast is nearly done resting. And while that's finishing up, we can make our zip style sauce. I've been waiting for this. You know, I love this sauce because it comes together so easily. We have one stick of butter here. <laughs> <laughs> like all good sauces, start with a <laughs> stick of butter. And we've got it over medium heat. And to that, we're going to add one half cup of Worcestershire sauce. Half a cup. Yeah, you have to love Worcestershire <laughs> to love this sauce. You are not messing around. Or you have to love butter, either either one. I love both, so <laughs> I'm ready. Two minced garlic cloves go into the pot, and two teaspoons of finely minced rosemary, one teaspoon of minced fresh thyme, one half teaspoon of kosher salt, and one half teaspoon of black pepper. And we're just gonna whisk this all together. We wanna bring this sauce to a bare simmer. Once the butter is fully melted, the sauce is done. So we could just set that aside while we carve our roast beef. Shall we? Mm-hmm. Well, this Ooh. cut of meat here has been resting for about 30 minutes. I just want to point out how beautiful this roast looks. You know, it's an ugly cut of meat to eat <laughs> if it's done wrong, but now it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. So one of the keys to really enjoying this cut of beef is to slice it paper thin. Oh, Brian, that looks good. You're not kidding when you said slice it thin. Spend a little bit of extra time carving the meat and making sure it's done right and it'll eat so much better. It's important to note that we cut 
this entire roast against the grain. That makes it even more tender. Mm -hmm. All right, so we will go to the platter with all our beautiful slices of meat here. We'll add a little bit of sauce mm. over top of our platter. All right, let me give you a few slices of yeah, meat. Yeah, right from the middle, please. Okay, and a little bit of zip sauce for you. <laughs> the sauce does smell good. This really makes it. Mmm. It's surprisingly fantastic, right? Mm-hmm. The meat is actually tender. Mm -hmm. It's not shoe leather. And the sauce. When you put all that Worcestershire in there, I was certain it was going to taste really harsh around the edges. Right. But no, it's soft and round, probably thanks to all that butter. Yeah, the butter helps a lot to take away that sharp edge of the Worcestershire sauce. Those fresh herbs, mm -hmm. the garlic, it really changes the entire profile of that sauce. This really is a transformation of the cheapest cut of meat. Mm -hmm. You could imagine yourself craving this on a Sunday afternoon. I get where the craving comes in because that sauce has a nice unique flavor with the fresh herbs. It's really the rosemary and the wish to share. That's a lovely combination. This is magnificent. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. So if you want to make this incredible roast beef from a bottom round, season the meat with salt and let it sit in the refrigerator overnight. Before cooking, rub the meat with a mixture of fresh herbs, salt, and pepper, and insert a probe thermometer. Roast the beef in a low oven, then turn the oven off and let the roast finish cooking in the off oven. Last but not least, make a quick Detroit-style zip sauce while the meat rests. From Cook's Country, a great recipe for bottom round roast beef with zip-style sauce. So what'd your dad say when you made this for him? Uh, he said it was overcooked. <laughs> <laughs>